Coffee is the best. Welcome to the Andrew Collins Show. I'm Andrew Collins, your host. Got a very clever name, dude. Huh? Clever name you came up with. I added show on there. What's that? I added show. You added show, yeah. Yeah, and the. Oh, that's not bad. That's cool. Now, when you think about it, it's now pretty I'm clever. Thinking about it, it's pretty original. What's your podcast name? Mm, I don't have one. Well. <laughs> <laughs> we just start physically fighting. I don't know who would win it. I think you'd win in a fight. That was I would. quick. That was quick. You rolled over there. What do you I mean? I don't know who you'd win. That's what. That's how quickly you assess the situation. You're 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 a muscular man, but you've got that. Can I say the R word? Uh, Rambo strength. Yeah, you got that Rambo <laughs> strength for sure. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean, Adrian? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I know, I know, dude. dude. Yeah. Rambo he dude. sounds like a Rambo. Oh yeah, yeah. he does sound also, like a Rambo. Rocky, by the way. I know, I know. I was being uh, Rocky. Yeah. <laughs> okay. This is. I feel like you got you got Rambo strength, and we know what that means. Yes. And you've got kind of like some country strong, right? Mm-hmm. Wouldn't you say? I'm not a pussy. Nobody was nobody said that, man. I could throw nobody my hands. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. I feel like wrestling wise, you, you've you been might, in some bar fights, probably. I've been in a party couple. fights. Party fights. I've college. been in some party fights. Well, yeah. First of all, Evan Williams is here. Hey guys. Um that was best intro I could have thought of. Good to of. be here. Good to be here. Whatever. Fantastic comedian. Mm. I am in awe of your work ethic, and I know that doesn't that doesn't sound like a compliment, but it is. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah. Not a lot funny, of com- but you work hard. It's not. Tr- that's yeah, not no, how I, I meant it. I mean, do you want to fight me though? We can. <laughs> it should end that way. I think that this episode should end that way. Uh, we'll oil wrestle yeah, for sure, dude. And we'll just come we'll, and stuff. We'll get on the ground, dude. Yeah, fuck we'll roll around, bro. I- I'll kiss you. I'll kiss you, man. You will. I'll do it right now. <laughs> Don't threaten me with a good time, dude. I'll do it. I'll make it weird, man. <laughs> this is what happens when two guys haven't been boozing in a while. You're like, dude, let's just fucking. You haven't been boozing? I stopped again. Stopped again. Yeah. What brought you back? I don't know. I think uh, I think I was I quit for the wrong reasons. Okay. In a way, you quit I, for someone else. Yeah. Okay. I think I quit for my career. And for the person I was working for, oh, this is a weird. Okay, yeah. who doesn't drink? <laughs> and I thought Whoa, they would, a, there's quotes on <laughs> that person doesn't drink. I thought they would Damn. like me better. Yeah, <laughs> if I didn't drink either. Yeah. And I've seen how they dealt with other people that didn't drink, and it wasn't always a good thing. Good thing. Yeah. No. So I think that was part of it. I don't know how much of the percentage was. I do think I should have quit. I have alcoholism in my family. Yeah. Mom's an alcoholic. Sure. Um, Mama Dukes. Gets, gram, grandpa's. Knocks him back. Yeah. Oh, Gramps. Yeah. Blackout. So, so it's in me. And mm-hmm. I, and, and uh, I'm a very anxious person. So after I drink the next day, I'm just a fucking panic attack little mess. Oh, yeah. yeah. After just drinking. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Next night, uh-huh. following night. What makes you panic? That your body feels it? And you're going like, to die. Oh, no. I'm killing my... I'm dying? I'm dying. Like, yeah. literally, not, like, in the future, like, right now. I'm dying right now. Yeah. Yeah. Right now. I get that sometimes, completely sober. Well, I drink a lot of coffee. And I'll drink so much sometimes. <laughs> it's it's skipping we- beats, bro. From you know, coffee? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's fucking... It's, it's the real deal, man. <laughs> What Still, happens when you go in panic, and how do you get out of it? I've only had one real panic attack. Um, and I say that because I used to tell people, I had a little panic attack last night or whatever. And then I had a real one. And I was like, oh, that's those were not panic attacks. A real panic attack feels like when you get pushed back in a chair, you know, and you catch yourself. It's like that over and over and over again. And you're positive you're dying. You're, I'm 100% positive I'm dying of a new thing. It's new. It's going to be called like the Evan Williams syndrome, you know, or whatever. Oh, shit. Like Lou Gehrig. Yeah. yeah right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to get a new Lou Gehrig going. <laughs> and I was on a plane. You know you made it when you get a fucking, you get a disease, like a weird, you. Yeah, weird yeah. disease. Which sucks because that means you made it right before your toast. Also, you know? I think, I don't know what Lou Gehrig's actually called in real life. Is, Is it that? Parkinson's? No. No. It's, um, 
The one with the ice bucket challenge was the Lou Gehrig <laughs> thing, right? <laughs> yeah, because he loved a cold shower. Loves a cold shower. I mean, After you know, a game. Athletes, oh, fuck, yeah. what was it? Eh, hey, whatever. We'll think of it. There's an A in there somewhere, right? ALS. Yes. Yes, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. L stands for Lou, I think. This could be completely <laughs> inaccurate. That's definitely inaccurate. <laughs> Did so, you say L stands for loop? Yeah. The anal loop syndrome? No, right? Lou, like Lou Gehrig. Oh, Lou. <laughs> God, I am, this, this is over. This is the end of my career. Isn't that fun? Is it happening on camera at the end of Don't worry, we everything I've been working towards? We ain't deleting it. I don't care what you fucking say to me after this. No, don't edit you it. Let me see, dude. Let so, him see. So you have this panic attack. You think you're going to die. I'm on a plane. Oh, you're I, on a plane. I That's hadn't oh, slept. Fuck. I have no problem with planes either. But I that day I did. I hadn't slept. And I had only coffee. Like airport triple espresso coffee. And no food. And I was married at the time. You know her. Mm. You know? Sweet lady. I was going to say the opposite. Oh, nightmare of a person. Yeah. Yeah. Just completely. devil. A monster. Yeah. Yeah. I can um, see why you were drinking. <laughs> yeah. Well, I didn't drink once. <laughs> no, I know. Golf, so golf, golf, yeah, yeah, yeah. You didn't yeah, give a fuck. Just to get through that yeah. tornado of a human being. You know, <laughs> she's very sweet. I to the liar. listeners. I keep lying. No, I'm not lying. She's great. <laughs> All right, tell me what you said um, in the kitchen. Whatever, it's full. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is the worst representation of me that's ever happened, dude. Nah, dude, I'm saying it all. What uh-huh. you told me. It's been a while since I've done a podcast. I think that's what's going on, dude. Um, I'm on a plane. I start freaking out, dude. And, and I'm like, like, you know, breathing like that. And I'm, I'm, I'm positive I'm dying. And then it's reinforced because my, all the color leaves my face. And I look at her and she looks at me and she's scared. And I'm like, I am dying. You know, so now it's like, it's confirmed. And, I'm like, no. <laughs> and she's just like, breathe, breathe. Everything's okay. Breathe, you know? And, and so I breathe and, and I just, I finally get to a point where I'm like, you're not dying. You're panicking. And once I knew what was happening, I was okay. Um, and then the color slowly came back to my face. I got some food on the airplane. We were good. The plane lands and, uh, the kids behind me, I, I, I noticed them. They're talking about me. Oh, I know. Where are they, they going? Like, ooh. Yeah. yeah they, they go, they go, look, mom. They're like imitating me, dude. I was roasted by children for having a panic attack. And, um. Big muscle man. Yeah. Ooh. I'm big and strong, but. You know. And from that moment, I have not had a panic attack because now I know what they feel like. Yeah. So if it starts, I'm like, you're just panicking. You're just panicking. But I know a lot of people have a bunch of them. So, well, what that could do, and what when I had my first one was in a restaurant. Anytime I'd go out to eat, mm-hmm. I'd be like, "It's gonna happen again." So if I was on yeah, a flight planes, like yeah. you, I'd be like, "One, I wouldn't drink as much coffee." Mm-mm. Also, there is I don't anymore. Right before a flight, yeah. Once I'm on, we're in the air. I'm starting chugging it, dude. But you know, that's me, dude. I, I, I have a problem for sure with coffee. With How many coffee, you taking yeah. back a day? I take back like three lattes a day. You know, it's nothing crazy, crazy. But then if it's a long night, I'll start drinking some C4. I turn into this guy named Van. We dropped the E. My name is Van. And I've discovered that recently. I've started partying recently. I don't know if you've noticed this like in my stories or whatever. Yeah. Kind of I don't know what's real and what yeah, I mean. Exactly. Some yeah. of it's sketches. Some of it's just me. I'm just I'm just going to clubs now. I'm 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 mosh pitting, you know? Yeah. I'm going to drinking parties and I'm not drunk. I'm just I'm but I'm an animal. And I'll do a backflip and I'll, you know, yeah, just start biting furniture and stuff. Just kind of letting this guy out that has been in there for so long. Was, I was a party animal like yourself. I, was, yes. I didn't get arrested on a, a wave runner, you know. A you were sea, on a standing dude. jet ski, I think. Right. Yeah. But I was, I was a partier and I got sober and I stopped partying. I've been partying recently, but sober. I don't, a little, a little I energy. think the old me would be like, that's weird. I it's, get it. It's a little weird. It's a little weird. It's a little weird. But I just missed my twenties, kind of. Well, you, you know? got married at what age? I was mar- I was essentially married at nineteen, but we we did the ceremony at twenty one. So you, you're an addict when you're how old? When you start your when you get sober? How old I are got, you? I went to rehab at nineteen. Okay. Yeah. So in high yeah, school, that was they a... voted me 
craziest <laughs> and most likely to party at age 80. That was one of our superlatives. It was a little clunky wording, but that's what it was. I got that, and in six months, I was in rehab. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, literally, they know that yeah. at 80, you're going to be partying and fucking drinking Red Bull instead. Just fucking high C punch, dude. Yeah. So you you started fucking partying early. Yeah, I was like I was like 15. The parents divorced at like 13, and Same. it left me in this house with my mom, who was as wild as me. And it was just me and her. And so I would throw these like keggers and stuff at like 15, 16. And she was a cool mom. She was cool mom. Quote, unquote, cool. Yeah. Just means mentally ill. Yeah, yeah, dude. Um, God bless her. (laughs) Hilarious woman. Loved me very much, but uh, just a wild, you know. To everyone else in your school, she's like, dude, Mrs. Williams fucking Not even that Judy, bro. They just call her Judy, man. Yeah, yeah, (laughs) yeah. yeah, yeah. Dude, Judy. Judy will buy you. Where's Judy at? (laughs) Judy will buy you Zima. They come to my house, and I'd be like, what's up, guys? They're like, where's Judy? You know? And she'd come and she'd sit in the circle and she wouldn't smoke weed with us. She'd just be there. Kind of like what I'm doing now, you know, just kind of being around people who are having fun and, and vicariously having fun with us, you know. Did you party as hard as you did to compete with Jews? <laughs> you yeah. think because she was stealing your I, thunder, dude? I couldn't keep up with Jews, <laughs> man. Jews, Jews was the most likable person in town. Oh, you know? man. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and I know you had, I saw a recent bit about you have a name or your face on your arm right I, well and your face brother is gone now we uh we've been removing it a little at a time here it's a portrait of them both but it was not done well so were they done at the same time or did you uh, yeah yeah same time oh. yeah so i i mateo drew this banana and i got it on so me that was judy's favorite food no 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 Judy, do you like pizza, you know? <laughs> French fries and stuff. <laughs> Maybe I'll get that, that next time. No, Judy, uh, I got Judy and Noah, my mom and brother. Oh, um, man. They passed away when I was 19 and 20. And I, at about 20, I, no, I was probably 22, 23. I was new in New York. Mateo had moved there. We immediate best friends. We hung out all the time. He draws me this one tattoo. Then I'm like, oh, can you draw me my next tattoo? It's a portrait of my mom and brother. He's like, well, that's a, that's a tall order. Yeah. Okay. He's like, I need like a little bit of time. You know, and I was like, I'm going to get it. He like, just tomorrow. adds a face to the banana. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's a little smiley. Dude. <laughs> a little, little Judy wig on top. <laughs> and and I'm like, well, I need, I need, I want to get it tomorrow. And he's like, well, I can't do a fucking portrait by tomorrow. And I was like, well, I'm going to North Carolina. I'm going to go to my tattoo artist. And he's like, well, I can't do that in that time. And so I just rushed it. I just trusted the tattoo artist. I was such a people pleaser that he showed me his stencil. And it was bad. It yeah. was bad. And he was yeah. like, do you like it? And I was like, love it. <laughs> but I was just, <laughs> just for him to like me. That's how much of a people pleaser I was back then. And and then he put it on me. He was like, this is good, right? And I'm like, it's so good. Such a good thing. Yeah. And then he did it. And I went home and I cried. Yeah. I literally, I literally cried. I went in the bathroom and I was like, I, this is on me forever. Like, that's on me forever, dude. dude. And so I'm getting it removed now, but it's very expensive. It's not It's, it's not going to be expensive for me now. I think I can, like, um, if I make, like, Instagram stories about it, I can get, like, a discount at, like, a local, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so I'll whore myself out to get it done for free. But um, before that... Would you get it redone? Yeah. You, yeah? yeah? Over the same arm, maybe? Yeah, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fade it enough. I would have to get, like... 14 sessions to get it completely gone. Damn. So I'm just going to fade it enough that they so can So you cover. slowly have to erase your mom and They're brother slowly and fading brother. away. <laughs> like a photograph in yeah. like Back to the Future. Yeah. You know? <laughs> like if I don't introduce my mom to my dad, <laughs> she disappears. Dude, the idea that you saw the stencil and you saw yeah. that it was terrible. It and then they have good. to trace it to your arm. Mm-hmm. And they like stick it to your arm. There's so I many do that steps with haircuts. The process that I could. Yeah. Oh, haircuts. Haircuts. I'll tip the guy more the shittier it is. Absolutely. I don't know what that disease I don't know. is. It's opposite uh, yeah. logic there. Yeah. But I get it. I'm like, maybe he'll, with this maybe money, this he'll will, get better. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> maybe we'll use this money for classes. And so you got silver. And then essentially you got married. Yeah. And then Not your mom passes away. I got yeah, married. yeah, you did yeah. get it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, even essentially. Yeah, yeah. Literally, like, man. Hypothetically, you got married. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, our families sat together, and a, a priest was like, "You guys are, yeah, you guys are a thing." Yeah, 
Was your your was your mom alive then, or did she pass? She was not. No, she she passed. I was newly sober. I was newly in a relationship with, you know, um, future wife. Yeah. And uh, I didn't even really get a chance to introduce her to my mom because she passed away like a month into me and her being together. So, yeah. And then your brother a year later. Brother was a year before. A year before. Yeah. Yeah. Jeez, that's yeah, it heavy. A, it was a wild couple years. Yeah, yeah. that's an ins- that's a, yeah. Yeah, it was like brother, mom, aunt, uncle, grandparents. Yeah, it was it was a lot. At one point, my dad was just like I was like at a uh, a funeral. I don't even remember which one it was, and he was like, "Hey, I just need you to know that this isn't normal." Like you know. Like, yeah. I mean, you might you might think this is normal because like this is all you know, but like it's not. There's a lot of people. There's a lot of people. I'm yeah, like, and I'm usually like, when it's that many people, it's like one wreck, you know? Like, they all yeah, died like in the, a bus. The, the Punisher, like, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, or, yeah people... Like, the gonna, mafia yeah. came to her, like, summer yeah. home. And no, this is all natural causes. This is natural know? causes. <laughs> so I don't even have, like, a revenge path I <laughs> yeah. can go on. <laughs> like, the Punisher. Just between you and God, boy. Just me and, you know, I'm just, like, fighting the air, dude. Holy yeah. shit, man. <laughs> that's, a, that's, like, yeah. So mm-hmm. then... Then you're like, all right, might as well try stand up. Might as well get in there. Might, might as well get in Let's this. try that out before therapy. That sounds, that sounds about. I right. did that. Yeah. I Let's mean, self deprecate until I feel okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. How'd that work out for you? Uh, the therapy or the stand up? Stand up before therapy. I'm better in therapy. <laughs> yeah. No, no. I mean, yeah, yeah. I was so happy to just have an identity at that point. For sure. Whatever it was. Right. And there was no. Um, I didn't have to go to school. I could just go do it. Same. Yeah. And that's why I loved it so much. You did some school. You were in <laughs> yeah, university I went to, yeah. in Florida? No, in, in New Orleans. At Tulane. New Orleans. New Orleans. I cheated Man. on everything. Absolutely. I didn't learn one thing in college. Yeah. I was a business major. Like, no, I got a no. degree, but I just... Yeah, you did. You got a bachelor's. Yeah. Wow. Cheated. I never would have... If, if you gave me just thousands of dollars, I never would have guessed that you finished college. I showed up at graduation and everyone's like, what? what? Like no yeah. one, no one. Did you finish on time? No. Okay. But yeah. that's the funny part. I could see you as a fan wilder. Like I could see that. It was one more summer after that. But my, mm-hmm. my dad and my mom came to the graduation. They gave me a diploma, but there was nothing in it. But mm-hmm. I was so <laughs> insecure that I needed to be part of that. But I needed six more credits. So I was like, yeah, yeah, I just graduated. But it wasn't a real graduation. Then mm-hmm. I graduated that next summer or yeah. that f- following few months. Interesting. But why would I even invited them to come uh-huh. to the graduation that wasn't right. real? It's not real. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I was really fucked up back then. New yeah. Orleans will do... That to you, you know. I've never been. It's. Uh, I want to go. I mean, you're gonna have to drink a lot of C B four, or whatever the fuck you've yeah. been drinking. Yeah, it's. Uh, oh, C four or C four. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's. Uh, <laughs> to keep up. It used to be a crazier city, yeah. though. Yeah. So fucking, I mean, that is. So you lost. So you just have your dad now, pretty much. Pretty much, yeah. Just pops, dude. I got a great, um, a fantastic uncle. His brother's really cool, my uncle Gary. My mom's side of the family kind of there. There's some sweet people over there, but it's messed up, you know. I mean, my my grandpa like kind of disowned her and uh, anyone that wasn't like a perfect example of a Catholic, you know. And when that happens, you kind of you kind of get canceled with your mom, you know. And uh, so th- yeah, they didn't like show up. To like Memorial or anything like that, so that kind of that fucked me up, man. You know, you grew up in North Carolina, North Carolina, in the South, take- in the South. Yeah, but they're not they're not Southern. I'm the only redneck in the family. So my mom's from Jersey, my dad's from Pennsylvania. Oh shit! Yeah, so how? Uh, yeah, I can My mom's from Chicago, my dad's from New York. Then growing up where I grew up in Florida, that, same shit. Yeah, yeah, same kind of shit. You felt yeah. like a fish out of water a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it's like nature versus nurture. You know, do you go with your parents at home or do you go with the rednecks at school? Yeah. And I kind of didn't really go with the rednecks at school, but now I love rednecks. <laughs> like I love them. <laughs> They're so funny. They're the best. They're so stupid and fun. Yeah. Yeah. Real they don't talk about shit. feelings. 
Except I mean, they do. That's in like a country a, yeah. song. They'll yeah, talk yeah, about yeah. <laughs> someone that left them, you know, and that they drink to feel better about it. But that's about it. Yeah. My, uh, yeah, there's a simplicity to how they see and view life and what they need out of life. That the simplicity of how they feel better about things. They literally just go mudding, you yeah. know? It's the best. Try and be sad mudding. They don't care about how many likes they got on Instagram. Absolutely not. They, don't, they probably don't have Instagram. Yeah. A lot of them don't have Instagram. I know. Yeah. My stepbrother, Jake, he doesn't. Dude, he... They're would, on Facebook arguing about guns, dude. Yeah. Oh, post on Facebook. With came with a... Like an, yeah. With a gun. Like, five of his photos... <laughs> his profile with, picture is just a gun. It literally a is. A lot of times, that's actually true. I swear it is. Yeah. I'm Scott, not even kidding. Our buddy Scott Chaplin, he has, he has a joke about, like, uh, this guy named, like, Dale or something. Like, he, he just always posts racist stuff, but his profile pic was a, a motorcycle... Like a dirt bike, and, and Scott just feels like he's, it's Dale the racist dirt bike. You know what I mean? It looks like a dirt bike dirt saying bike. all of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just saying, like, slurs. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, uh, yeah, man, he doesn't, he just fishes, you know, he goes surfing, mm-hmm. he feeds our fucking mini horse. You have Has, a mini horse? Yeah, we got, yeah, I just had a baby. Not a pony. No. A mini horse. Yeah. My dad, who's a Jew from a Flushing. Horse? Huh? How big's a mini horse? Uh, about half the size of a regular <laughs> horse. It looks like a donkey, but it just, you know. Yeah. It looks like mini me, literally, but uh-huh. for a horse. So it still has the majesty of a horse, because donkeys look kind of... Yes. Kind of Rambo, yes. right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> a little bit, yeah. Dude, yes. A little bit. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Okay. And um, my dad, it's so funny, because he's like a Jew from Flushing, from Queens, mm-hmm. and now... You know, with my step family, he married a, uh, you know, a, 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 she's actually from Pennsylvania. Are you say but a she, slut? Is that what you're going to no. say? No. Okay. <laughs> no. You said a slut. <laughs> well, you know, he married a slut, and so. <laughs> you're Stut- stuttering. You're like Porky Pig. You're like, he married a slut, a slut, a slut, a slut, an honest woman. I think what it was was. <laughs> I wanted to. She's from Pennsylvania, but she is okay. kind of rednecky. But I didn't want to call her a redneck, and so There's then I rednecks no, in apparently Pennsylvania, I her, dude. Oh, very much so. Like, they're, they're from like Quaker country. Yeah, like horses, like are like I know it. Yeah. Real cars and shit. Yeah, yeah. my dad's from like Wilkesbury, Pennsylvania. There's like these little towns there, like Wilkesbury, Dallas. Yeah, I did a show in Wilkesbury one time. Really? Yeah, with Nikki. Town to do a show. Yeah, it used to have like a big mill. Like it used to be like. Yeah. The shit. True. Yeah, there was a huge factory there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, my grandpa worked there, I think. I'm sure. They're making pencils. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I think I, so. I think, uh, yeah. Good crowd. Good, Good crowd, people. probably. Yeah. yeah. Friendly people. Very yeah. friendly people. Yeah. But if you drive 30 minutes into the woods, it's just rednecks, you know? Hunting and... You know, it is interesting. Guns on the... You can find rednecks anywhere. Cab of their truck. Everyone thinks it's just in the south. No, it's just people like how's their Confederacy the flags? Yeah, just yeah. go to the woods. Mm-hmm. People say Florida is not the south. Go thirty minutes from the ocean, you're gonna see the Florida's most back the south. Yeah, man. it's a weird south. It's a wild like fever dream south. I think it just gets a lot of shit for Florida man. You know? Yeah, Florida man is a, a wild. He's like a cryptid at this point. He's like a Bigfoot and Mothman and Florida Man. There's, Chupacabra of the South, you know? There's a, there's a lot of different Floridas, you know, starting in Miami. Then you work your way up, and it just, it's just, every county is its own thing. Yeah. And. Yeah, I and, haven't experienced all of the Floridas. Yeah. It's Pensacola. fine. Where I grew up, there, it's a very different Florida than South Florida. People in South Florida laugh at it. Yeah. Yeah. For what reason? Just backwards, backwoods, oh, all okay. the backs. All you the know? backs. Just like, yeah. just like. Everybody's walking backwards. Just like Dude, you live in Port St. Lucie. <laughs> like, it's like one of those places. Okay. It's like, yeah. bitch, you're like, you like fucking smuggle prescription drugs. Like, 100%. You don't yeah. do shit. Yeah. Miami loves talking shit about Central Florida. Mm. I guess the other way around too. They're like, they don't speak English. You know, yeah. it's one of those things. <laughs> yeah, it's just racist. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was, I was actually um, thinking about like how much content you put out and how like mm. hard you work. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, oh, you have like no family. <laughs> <laughs> I 
wasn't uh, expecting that to go that yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. You'd be like, you're talented and a hard worker. It's like, no, you're an orphan. Yeah, yeah. Uh, your whole family's <laughs> dead, dude. Oh, no wonder. <laughs> no wonder why. You, have, yeah. you don't ever have to make a phone call. Nope. Look, me and my dad, we, we text... <laughs> <laughs> he's on every app. He's on TikTok. He's 74 years old. He's posting just videos of him hiking on TikTok. Ugh. Love it, you know? Just fucking... A lot of people follow Doesn't him. even check this. He probably follows you. He follows anyone I've ever encountered. I love that. And he supports all of you. Uh, if you ever see like a gorilla icon, like a profile pic of a gorilla. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> his name's <laughs> Rustlings. And he's, just, he's the most supportive guy on the planet, you know? Uh, big big fan of mine, so that's cool. It's fucking but awesome. It's, yeah, it's just him, man. And he he kind of took on being like Mr. Mom and like you know multiple hats. I think when I lost some people, and so God bless them, you know. What does drive you to do all that? To work so hard? Because I I envy it. I'm like all kidding aside. I think it's incredible what you do. I appreciate because you keep putting out content that not only a lot but like fucking amazing content smart content that fucking does really well and i think especially lately you're getting a lot of recognition for it and i only see your career fucking going great and it's really Thanks, awesome man. to see i will chug you on a protein bar in a couple weeks and die you know <laughs> but yeah. then it'll really take off like Honestly, people kind of you... pick up on like the sketches i'll get like a million followers like once on i'll tupac the comedy scene you know <laughs> But I, no, I thank you. Uh, I'm really obviously really bad with compliments. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. no, it's. I mean, I, I'm I bad at usually it. giving them, but the older I get, the more comfortable I am just fucking giving out love without a joke at the end, which is hard. You no, know, I like this new Andrew, and I wanted to talk about that as well. Um, but first, I'll just say what drives me. I I just really, really, really want it, man. What I, do you want though? I want to make movies. Yes. And I, I do need money to do that. And it would help to have, like, you know, fans to do that because they could support and stuff. Um, and then once they come out, I can know that these things will be seen. But I want to make movies more than anything in the world. And I have since I was, like, five. And I just, you know, I got almost distracted with stand-up for a long time. And I'm back doing it a lot, you know. I never stopped doing it, but I'm back doing it a lot. And I'm on tour. And, and that's great because it's, like, I love storytelling. It's just my favorite thing in the world. You're a hell of a storyteller, too. Oh, thank like, you. Like, you're a hell of a long-form storyteller, too. I always love seeing your, like, your wild tales, man. You Thanks, got man. some, and you're good at telling them. And I remember when you were, like, starting to try and form, like, your one-man show, and you were, like, kind of studying, like, the Berbiglias and stuff like that and, like, working on that. That shit's inspiring to me. Like, to me, it's it, nothing against our just soul stand-up friends, but, like... That doesn't really like excite the shit out of me, you know, just kind of set up and punch and stuff. Mm -hmm. I, of course, have some jokes that are just set up punch, but like just storytelling and like challenging yourself and coming from stand up and it being such a soul thing, uh, kind of lonely thing sometimes, especially when you're flying around at these hotels and stuff, going into like filmmaking or, or even like collaborative sketch making, you know, where you're like with people and there's multiple minds in it. And you're all getting excited about it, and you've got bloopers, and you're having laughs, and then you edit it, and you send it to each other, and you're like, look how it came out, you know, and then you can celebrate it together when it comes out. I just love this, like, collaborative effort of filmmaking. It's, like, my favorite thing in the world. And I love stand-up. I don't love the grind of it. I don't love the traveling. I don't love the empty hotel room. Um, but with filmmaking, I love every single step. I love the writing of it. I love the pre-production and planning and finding location and casting it and getting a, a DP excited to shoot it and thinking about how it's going to look and, and challenging ourselves. Maybe we do like a one -er. We shoot this like it's one shot, find hidden cuts when we swipe behind his back and like thinking of ways to tell the story and how to light it and how to score it. And then shooting it is like the most fun. All right, right back. Yeah. Post, yeah. Yeah, post-production. This is actually... <laughs> <laughs> All good, man. Yeah. Um, yeah, I love, I love post-production, too. I love, like, seeing it come together and slowly become a movie. And, like, with movies, like, you have the movie you wrote, and then you have the movie that you had the resources to actually shoot, mm -hmm. which is different, usually, from what you wrote. And then you have what happens in the editing room, where you, like, make a discovery, and you're like, oh, this is a funnier movie than we realized. Let's pace this differently, you know, like, whatever. And then you have the movie that you premiere to people and they're going to see it differently than you saw it. 
and have these audiences ask you questions that you didn't even have an answer for about your movie. Now you got to answer it. And it's just, I don't know, it's so exciting to me. So I guess what I'm hearing is that you have an end goal, which is to make a movie and to have it in the theaters. Yeah. And it's just amazing. Like that's your, that's your goal. And in between that, you have about 3000 things (laughs) that you have to make, or Mm -hmm. you could have a dad with the last name Spielberg. You know what I mean? Like, like it's nepotism. either you have to sweat blood and tears, constantly proving yourself. You've proven yourself over and over again to make things that people enjoy and like Mm -hmm. over and over. Mm -hmm. but i have been told for years now that you know and i'm not going to whine publicly or privately yeah and i'm not going to make excuses publicly or privately i've made a decision to not complain um but you know i went three years without representation and i was trying to have representation but i went you know three years up until like a month ago and i found well he found me but i found this great manager um matt beals at levity and he's been like just crushing it for me recently and I like really appreciate him. But uh I yeah, I mean I I I was in New York and I had booked a couple dramatic roles on some TV shows where they murder me, you know. Yeah, on the Americans. <laughs> I got a, a murderable face. Yeah, okay? yeah, I can see that. So yeah. they kill me on the Americans, they kill me on FBI and I was like I would love to continue getting killed. You're like um, your whole family's dead. You're yeah, great yeah. at it. Let's you know? off you as well. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll join your family <laughs> cinematically. You know? We'll put your face on your own <laughs> tattoo. Yeah. <laughs> Added to the Mount Rushmore of ghosts on my arm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, so you're. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and I had done like you know I'd gotten past at the cellar and um and I had done some New York things and I was like let me go try L A and I I told my agents at the time, um, I was at CAA no names. All respect, uh, but I was I was at CAA and I and I, I told them I was thinking about moving to LA, and they were like, "That's a great idea." Um, when are you thinking of moving? And I was like, "February." They were like, "Perfect." Uh, that's the beginning of pilot season, mm-hmm. so we'll reach out to all the casting directors before you get there, and you'll be lined up. And I I got here in February of 2020 uh, with my wife at the time, and um, I went on one audition. and It was okay. And then no auditions were coming, and my manager at the time reached out to them and couldn't get a hold of them, and then like demanded to get a hold of them eventually. And they were like, "Yeah, we're just we're gonna you know move on uh, from Evan. Um, we think that he's really talented. Uh, we just don't have the time to get him where he needs to be. We know he's gonna go far, but we just and so basically they were they said like we don't want to work. You yeah. Know? And um, so I was like, okay, all right. And I was like. This is the corniest thing in the world, dude. So, like, buckle up. But I was having a meltdown on the street. I was, like, walking up and down Hyperion Boulevard because I went to an open mic. And it was in a bar. And it was noisy. And it was, like, my first time gonna, I was going to be on stage in L.A. And I went in there. And I looked at that. And my name was in, like, ten comics. And I just turned around and I left. And I was like... I, am, am I about to do? Am I going back to open mics? Like that's okay. I'm not above open mics, but I just felt so low that day, and I just started walking home, and I was just walking. And I was like having. I was like, what? What am I doing? Why did I come here? Why did I fucking come here? Like I don't. I, don't, I know some people here, but I don't really know people here. What the fuck am I gonna do? And then I realized I wasn't thinking. I was talking out loud, and I said, "What am I gonna do?" And then I was lit by this like blue neon light. And I, I looked in this store. Mel's front. Diner? It was no, oh. no. It was like it was some like boutique. Like, <laughs> I'm Mel's just Diner. guessing. I'm just yeah, guessing. Just throwing wild things out lights. there, dude. That's cool. I, you know, any other guesses, you throw them out, dude. But it was actually a boutique <laughs> shop. And Greek restaurant? No, 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 no not a Greek like restaurant. A gift, uh, like jewelry and stuff, I think. <laughs> yeah, and uh, little trinkets. Sorry, and yeah. Go. It was closed, um, and there was just this neon sign that was lit up, and it said, "Do what you love." I don't know why that happened. It's the cheesiest thing ever. But I said out loud, what am I going to do? And then a, the sign, a literal sign said, do what you love. And I was like, okay, all right, okay. So you and bought so a I dirt just, bike. and I bought a dirt bike. <laughs> and I did cocaine again. 
I finally relapsed and um, <laughs> tanked everything. But Marriage, you filmed it all. Career. First yeah. viral video. Uh-huh. No, so so, yeah. so what do you do with that? Because a lot of people have these epiphanies, right? right? But then they go home and they, they play God of War or whatever. Because behind every epiphany yeah. is a lot of hard work. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and uh, whatever you do. Um, yeah. So it's like, okay, so you get this moment. Yeah. You see the sign. Mm-hmm. You're walking back home. You're like... No, this is all happening for a reason. It's all connected here. There's a higher power of something coming at me here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I just realized, like, you're never going to have trouble with, like, answering the question what you love. If you love it, it's very clear. Mm -hmm. And at that time, I didn't love stand-up. So I stopped worrying about getting on stage for a little bit. Yeah. And um, I went home and I started writing a horror feature. I want to make a horror movie. I'm a huge horror movie fan. And then like a week later, the quarantine happens. And so we're all stuck inside. So this break that I was secretly about to take, the world was taking it all the time. And I was like, great, I don't even need to like say that I took a break. Like I don't even have to be ashamed that I'm not doing it. Because nobody's doing it. Yeah, you're literally We're, about to be like, I retire. I yeah. reti- ah, it reminds me of everybody. Oh, what's yeah. the movie when he's like, I'm <laughs> gay. And the plane's going down yeah. and almost oh, famous. Yeah. Almost famous. And yeah. then the plane yeah. is fine. Like, like that. Wait, you were what almost, was that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm never doing stand up yeah. again. You're Fuck. Like, well, now no one is. But what were you, what were you saying? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, ah, nothing. I was like, I can't wait to do it again. So okay. you have this epiphany to, to make a movie. Now, COVID. Then oh, COVID yeah. was like, nah. And so I was like, all right, well, then what can I do? I can't get on stage. I can't get on a set. Let me just start posting my stand-up. Somebody told me, uh, Mike Feeney told me to download uh, TikTok and start putting stuff there because comedy did well there. And I was like, okay. And so I started putting my jokes up there. They did okay. And they started doing good. And then they started doing great. And then I ran out of jokes. Yeah, <laughs> I ran out of jokes. <laughs> yeah. And so then I started looking at my notepad and I was like, this joke did well one time. Let me shoot that like a sketch. And the joke was, I have this Southern bank. and Oh, the credit card. <laughs> yeah, and, and they're yeah. intense. They call me. They're like, did you get a sandwich? And I'm like, yeah, I got a sandwich, you know. <laughs> but then they're like, all right, well, did you then get a TV a thousand miles away? And I'm like, oh, fuck, no, I didn't. And they're like, well, we have our sights on that person right now. Would you like us to take the shot? And I did it on stage, and the crowd liked it okay. But this comedian, Lafayette Wright, remember him? Yeah. He came up to me and was like, that's really funny. You should keep doing that. But then I never did it again. But it was in my notes still. And so I shot it like a sketch. And it blew up. You know, it got like these millions of views. And and then the comments were like, what happens next? What's episode two? And so then I just made an episode two. And then I went to Hawaii um, with my wife at the time. And I started making episodes like he's in Hawaii. And like the guy's still looking for him and stuff. And I just started making stuff any day that I could and um and, I, and then and the sketches did well too and so I just kept doing them and you know that's another thing is like do what you love like I I want to make a movie and so sometimes like all right when I started making sketches yeah I was like talking to people about it and, and I was like I don't want to like make sketches though because then I'm like a, a funny video guy you know, I'm gonna be a funny video. Guy. Well, here's the thing, though. Mm-hmm. Five years ago, well, this was only a couple years yeah. ago, but we're we've been in this game long enough where if you were just on YouTube and just like, especially yeah. coming up in New York City as a right, stand-up right. comic, mm-hmm. and you're making little freaking sketches, like you're such a little bit, like it was yeah. seen, it was a completely different world mm-hmm. just five years ago in regards to trying to get viral you were still waiting for gatekeepers to like oh, yeah. comedy central to fucking give you a half hour and then you get an hour Big and each, time, dude. and like yeah. all this yeah it's completely different now yeah I but still meeting. that's in your brain mm-hmm. those thoughts yeah of like and, yeah and, and in the in your brain as well as a comedian you have comedians yes and so mine for some reason were mark norman and sam Marill, and they were like are you gonna be a funny video guy Dude, is that what we're gonna do? Um, and I was just like, I guess, I guess not. And but then I made one, and it was the Guy Ritchie thing, and so it was like these British. And Norman gangsters. probably goes, "That was funny." Exactly. 
That's yeah. the weirdest part about yeah, all of this. Like, is these people in our heads yeah. actually would like the creative Literally show we the, make. Literally the two Because they couldn't head. do it. Yeah. Yeah. The two in my head both personally reached out at one <laughs> yeah, point. Dude. And were like, hey, I love what you're doing. It cracks me up. And I was like, what is, what is <laughs> what that? Is Why did I do that? Dude? It's the same guy I that stands up. Like, yes. Yeah, yeah dude, dude. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. I have that so much of people that yeah. I think hate me. I could give you a list. Sam was the sweetest. Man. Yeah. He, like, he reached out. He was like, it's so cool what you're doing. Because you're, you're building a following that way, but not burning jokes. And, and, and I just was like, dude, you you were the dude in my... I didn't tell him this, but I was like, you're the dude in my head that told me not to. And that's so ridiculous because you never would have done that. I just saw him as like, you know, one of the like prime examples of like a great stand-up. And I was like, well, if I'm, if I'm going to be a stand-up, I can't be a funny video guy. This is what I learned about great stand-ups. They're usually pretty sensitive people. They and the reason sense. why they're great... Is because they don't view things in a myopic lens of just yeah. like this is right, this is wrong, yeah. this is clean, this is dirty, right? You know, yeah. and but we put that on them. Mm-hmm. In a way, I do think like I don't know what it is, but maybe in a way we do it so it gives us an excuse to not do it. Like maybe we're looking for an excuse a little bit. Yeah, you know, yeah, because it'd yeah. be easier just not to do it. A hundred percent, and that's something my buddy, you know, our buddy Greg Stone said. Is um, I was just like, he he saw the the British gangster thing, the Guy Ritchie thing, and he was like, why 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 why, why are you not doing this all the time? And I'm like, because I don't want to be like a funny video guy. And he was like, who cares? Yeah. No one cares. Do you care when you see like a funny video? You, you or just keep scrolling if you don't like it. And if you like it, you you like it. But if you don't like it, you don't even care, right? I'm like, no, I don't care at all what people are doing. He's like, then who cares? Make a thousand of them. He said, who cares to make a thousand of them? And I was like, okay. And so, like, that was why I started doing it. It was just like, oh, yeah, no one no one gives a shit. Like, in a good way. Yeah. Like, in a good way. So it know? started organically. Yeah. Um, How are you now with it? Do you feel like it's a chore now or are you still? I love in, it so you much. You still love it. I love it, yeah. Yeah. I love it more Do than Do you ever. love the react? Do you care about how the video, how many views it gets and stuff like that? Because... I mean, I, I, I of get, course I yeah. do. Yeah. yeah, of course I do. But I, I, it doesn't hurt my soul like it used to. If it doesn't get the numbers I want, like I, um, like the Conan O'Brien documentary, Conan O'Brien can't stop. You know, when he like got that money from Tonight Show, part of the deal was he couldn't a- appear on TV, radio, or film. And so he was like, "What does that leave live performance?" So he did a bunch of live performances, and he said there was like a bit in the middle. The, the crowd didn't laugh at, but it was his favorite. And so he never stopped doing it. And it's like, so some of the videos I make, I'm like, this one's for me. This one's just for me. I love it. I love it. I love how it came out. I love the friends that came together to help make it. I'll rewatch it because it tickles me. And like, yeah, it's like longer and it's not, you know, a super like shareable thing. Like it's not one you're like, oh my God, this is so me. You know, yeah. and you like send it to your friend, but it's like one that I love. And like, so I just try and like, look at it through that lens um but i've loved it recently i linked up with these guys here in la that we all kind of make stuff together these guys like max goodrich and um jason rodello my buddy cliff cisneros like uh jason win we just we we meet up and we each bring like an idea and then we help each other shoot all our ideas and um it's just made it so great because all the sketches I was shooting, I was playing every character like this fucking Norbit, yeah. you know what I mean? And um, you start to feel crazy. Like, you're just, like, in your apartment. Like, every once in a while, you look in the mirror, and you're like, I'm a clown. You know what I mean? I'm, yeah. like, I'm doing a costume change, like, to be in my own sketch. And um, so meeting up with people recently and, like, making stuff together has been really cool. You recently, uh, I was thinking about this because you through doing this over the last two years um now you're at a point where (laughs) you're in videos with two i guess if you take a tv person the biggest tv person in the world one of them and then the biggest person on youtube Uh in the world yeah you have courtney cox on (laughs) one hand and you have mr beast right on the other (laughs) And now those worlds are colliding. People are like, you know, it used to be, oh, that's a U- oh, YouTube awards, you know, was uh-huh. like a joke, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now this guy's, you know, going to be a billionaire. He's fucking changing the world, yeah. like one video at a time. How does it that's feel wild. to shoot 
videos with these. These are the two of the biggest celebrities ever in their field. Mm. Does it feel surreal? Do you feel like an imposter a little bit? And how are they as people? And like seeing them and being that close to the sun, I guess. Mm. Does it feel more attainable that you can get to maybe not that point, but to a point where, you know, you're in those kind of conversations, you know? Yeah, it's wild. It's just like it, it was it was that was especially those two people were a bit of a whirlwind, you know, of a time. Um because like I said, like meeting these new guys, like we got together and we brought ideas and we shot them. The very first time we met, uh, I shot one about like a hangover. Another person shot one about like when someone steals your joke, like at a party, like goes to another group and says it and it crushes. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. And then it. another one, Max, had this idea for Drake, like this little Drake clip he saw to kind of edit himself in it. And it looked like when Drake reaches out of camera, he reaches in. To Max's scene and like messes with his drink, okay, and then that I played the hand in that. All right, I'm just a hand. I'm Drake's hand. But that's that's the beauty of doing a group <laughs> thing, though. Sometimes you just have to be the backup quarterback. Absolutely, because the next one will be. be yeah, hand. I was happy to be the hand, and then that just happened to really blow up, and um, and then everybody started making their own version of that, including Courtney, including Mr. Beast, and so these people were like. Can you come over and be the hand? <laughs> oh, I want you to be the hand. Courtney was a little different. Um, you know, there's mutual friends with her and I, and then you know, I've been over there a few times now. She's just she's super great. Like she's just sweet, down to earth, very ADHD like myself. She's all over the place, and um, and so it started with that, and then it kind of built. And same with Mr. Beast. Like it started with that, but I brought some other ideas on that trip, and he loved them, so we shot them, and like. To answer your question, it's ballsy it's, to bring ideas, though. Yeah, apparently, apparently right? he says no to a lot of them too. So it was like it was it was cool that he was down. Like, what about you know? my left hand? Yeah, like, yeah. Like, like, he you like this. Again, but like, <laughs> it's my foot. Yeah, right? like, won't it? Buckle up! It's my foot this time. <laughs> no, but uh, dude, that's fuck. I mean, you got to a point where you go, all right. I don't know. I feel like apparently you take failure or um, rejection. Maybe you actually take it horribly, but you still put yourself. <laughs> In these positions uh, where it's like it could fail, yeah. And you, I like, try to take it well. I'm a, a sensitive man too. Same, um, yeah. And I, I, I wish am I was anxious, wasn't. and I had a lot of imposter syndrome for a long time. I mean, it was almost like any stage I got on, or especially any set, because that was like transitioning from stand up to acting. So when I started getting acting roles, it's like, dude, you don't belong. Like but you, you did the work. I remember you going to acting school. Yeah. I remember yeah. seeing you in the Upper West Side sometimes. And yeah, you're like, oh, yeah, I was in acting school. Yeah. Like, you've yeah. done the fucking work. But still. My yeah. So, yeah. helped a lot. Yeah. yeah. And, and, just, and then just putting myself in front of the lens as much as possible until I was desensitized to it, you know? And I'm still learning. I'm not, like, fucking Phil Seymour Hoffman. Like, I have a lot of learning to do still, and I love it. But um, the, making videos with those two that you mentioned is really inspiring because... They don't need to do shit anymore, dude. Like, yeah. like Courtney, I don't know how much money she makes from residuals on Friends, but it's got to be like ten million a year. Like, I mean, you know, it's it's like she doesn't need to be doing videos. And so this guy that was like me, that was like, I don't want to be the funny video guy. Um, Monica, <laughs> you know, is she loves making these videos. It just tickles her. Like she's like, you, you throw an idea at her or she has an idea and she's like, Oh, we could shoot this too. And like, she becomes a little kid, you know? And you're like, Oh, that's so cool. Like you don't have to ever stop being a little kid. Like when I was a little kid and I had a flip cam, I made little short films with my friends. Like I made a little zombie film with my buddy, Sean Siddiqui. And like, you remember those like cool like, squeezable? No, he's alive. <laughs> yeah, right. Sean, dude, I'm I feel so like I'm gonna die your lives. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah, don't get too close to me. To be honest, dude, that's like <laughs> so I'm so like <laughs> I'm the tape. You're from the cooler. The ring, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you yeah. like watch me, you die in seven days, and so. Sorry, you made this video with Sean. Sorry. Yeah, me yeah. and Sean saw like 28 days later, and we so we made like a little zombie movie, and I remember that we were like 12, you know, but like. Those little Kool-Aid squeezables, you know, you like take the cap off and like you squeeze the, you get them in like after a soccer I game. I remember, yeah, like, yeah, 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 those were the best. We use those for blood. We use like the cherry ones and like we put it in our neck. It's like we like got bit and we fall to the ground and we like squeeze it. And it was like, it was like, and it looked great in the night lighting and stuff. And like, so just to see like little film tricks and stuff back then, 
it excited me so much and um just trying not to lose touch of that like the kid that wanted to make stuff you know that's that's why we you were creative to begin with i think that is one of the things now that you say it i've even thought about it that way with stand-up you would think that would be oh it's silly but Mm. if you're the silly guy in stand-up you're not taking seriously like you have to have a point of view (laughs) and if you don't have a point of view what the fuck are you really even saying yeah, yeah, you know, and yeah, then yeah. you become this like <laughs> shallow, like hollow man who yeah. nothing can affect me. The mm. crowd, you can't take me. You can't see weakness. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And it actually, you forget about being a kid, and you stop being a kid. Yes. And yeah. You just start being this like <laughs> telling it like it is, yeah, motherfucker. Yeah. yeah. And look, there's plenty of stand-up that's silly and stuff, but it's like, mm-hmm. if you want to be respected, you got to say what's really... Yeah, you, think. you need to do... You get up there and say something that scares you, man. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? yeah. When you start thinking that you're, like, changing... The world, lives yeah. And, and, that, and that you're doing something that's daring on a level that other guys aren't doing, that's when, like, you just become un- insufferable, you know? Yeah. And we saw that happen with some guys, and it also existed within us. Like I, it could have easily been something a road that I went down. You know, there's a couple of times where like I started talking about like losing my mom on stage or like addiction, and I'm like, man, I'm like, I'm talking about real shit, you know. But like, okay, cool. Um, is it funny? Because remember, that's like what it's all about. Like, are people laughing? And and that's great if you can talk about stuff. It it, it does like give you a little power over that thing. But it is not therapy, you know. We we shat all over uh, Hannah Gatsby, you know. But she has some good points, too. Yeah, man. Like, big time, you know. Like, we were trained to get to the funny part of a thing and then bounce away from it, you know. L- land on the funny thing and then, and then ditch it, you know. And I noticed that with, like, some of my shit. Like, I thought it counted as therapy, and it doesn't, dude. It just counts as a joke. And then I sat in the therapist's chair and realized, like, how mad I was still and how, like, filled with grief I was and, like, had to, like, actually start working at that. I know. When I, I was, I, like, 28. Yeah, that's about, I, I think I was, I probably didn't go to therapy for the first time. I went when I was a kid and when my parents got divorced. Mm. 13 as well, you said? Yeah. Yeah. And um, I remember I told the therapist that my dad is thinking with the wrong head. <laughs> when i was like 13 good job Whoa, not a bad dude. joke yeah that's probably my first like talking about uh, your dad's dick though at 13 well was, where did know? i hear that from right. obviously i heard yeah. it from him because he always yeah. bragged about that cock no 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 <laughs> i heard it from my mom talking shit about him you know oh yeah i'm sure yeah probably you know yeah but like so that was like my and then i didn't really go to therapy after that after i crushed and i was mm-hmm. like all right i'm good yeah and then no yeah. i went at like 34 <laughs> 35 and then you know, a lot of people, they, they ask, I don't need to go to therapy, whatever. It's like this whole, like, whatever. I, I do think that therapy, more than anything, I think getting the foundation of what was my family like, what, just your whole, like, history and, like, why am why are you that way? Then you kind of mm. build off of that. Yeah, big time. And I think those, like, those first five to ten sessions are so fucking important just to have a base of what so then you could at least go to that no matter where you are yeah um and no matter who you're talking with like you don't necessarily need to do those first six sessions with your next therapist you know because it's like work you've already done can kind of consolidate that stuff for them like i got a new therapist recently and he just steamrolled me man he didn't need like all the history he just like saw through it and was just like he was like asking me about my mom and stuff because like I was in like a relationship that was like you know um, maybe a little toxic and uh, and he was like oh you want you like want to fix people you know because like you feel like you couldn't fix your mom and like I was like <laughs> yeah yeah and he's like why are you why are you like you're you're pushing me away right now by like laughing you know and I was like yeah I mean sure not nah, you know and he's like you're doing it right now like you're stressed and so you're moving a lot I don't know if you notice that but you're moving a lot and you're sighing. And you're laughing because like you don't want me to help you, right? You don't let anybody help you, and I'm like, dude, what? What is happening? You know, dude, this is like Goodwill hunting. Shit. Yeah, literally, it's like, not your not fault. You too, yeah, man. yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> not, not your you, fault, man. dude. And um, and he was just like, yeah, you're not letting anybody help you. I was like, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not talking to my friends right now. He's like, why aren't you talking to your friends? I'm like, I don't think they can help me. He's like, do you not think I can help you? 
And I was like, maybe I do think you can help me. And I'm like, afraid you're going to help me. And I don't know what that's going to look like if I'm helped, you know. And then he just was like, you blame yourself for your mom's death? And I'm like, no, definitely not. And he's like, do you blame yourself for your mom's death? And I was like, I don't think so, man. I don't think so, honestly. He's like, do you, though? And I'm like, holy shit. Is this a credit card fraud? Yeah, hi, sir. <laughs> yeah, I fucking broke down, dude. dude. And it came to terms with that. Holy shit. I, yeah, yeah, I thought that I could have been there more. And like... I, I feel had that never even sometimes. admitted yeah. that to myself. Yeah. I didn't know that that well, it's was a dark, true. Well, it's a very dark thought to think about yourself. Yeah. That's a hard thing to, th- to fucking to swallow, for That's sure. Rough, dude. Yeah, yeah, man. And then I faced that, you know? And, and what is on the other side of that? Help? The other side of that is... Um, like, so you say, like, you push people away, you don't want to be helped. Mm-hmm. What's the fear of being helped? Like, what's the feeling behind that? Like... Once you're helped, are you not, not as funny? Are you I'm not a as good money? guy? Not that yeah, I um, deserve being helped. Like, uh, just thinking like, no, this is who I am. Like, I, I'm, I'll have like this weight on my back is part of my character. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And like, um, yeah, I don't, I don't fully have the answer to that. Yeah, but I walked through a lot of that with him. You know, since then, and like, um, faced that. You know, do you fear being happy will? Uh, slow down this train you're on of uh, career and and being funny and like I do I have those fears like me too even you know, though I know that that's not true I, it's not it's the I same way that you think true. Sam Morell won't like your shit it's the right. same like I'm funnier when I'm fun dude I was yeah. I was a pretty fun kid with yeah. my friends I was fucking hilarious you cause know? it's like when you have this shit you know that you're dealing with it's like you have something that's like running after you and you're like running from it you know, and when you're running, you're like crushing it. You're like, I'm not going to look at that. So let me look at this script and let me write this sketch. Let me make sure we can shoot that tomorrow and like book this stand up thing and promote it and like edit this. And like, I had no time to think about that thing that's behind me because I've been like running like crazy. And I guess, the, yeah, there's like this fear that like, well, if I fix all this shit in here, what am I just going to be yeah. chasing me? And I'm just going to be still. And is that guy funny? Because, like, you know, having an edge is pretty funny, you know? And, like... I think maybe I, doing know. it from, like, that pure spot, though, of, like, you're not running. You could just do it when you're treading water or you're yeah. just, like, standing still. Maybe you will maybe you won't do... Maybe you'll do maybe two or three laps. You know, or, like... Yeah. Or, or maybe you'll focus more on just one uh-huh. that you like more rather than I need to get this many out or whatever yeah. it is. And it's not just content. It's just life, too. It's like, right. maybe I don't have to get this many girlfriends or I don't have to fuck as much or I don't have to, like... Mm-hmm fucking do a backflip at a party <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you always should do a backflip at a party, do a backflip with a party dude. everyone not, loves the backflip not something back. that goes away yeah. yeah dude i don't know like i i um i definitely i fear that stuff for sure about you know losing the edge or whatever you know yeah. and it's like yeah i don't think you ever lose that though like you don't it man. just it just and, and the more that you are healthy uh and work on being healthy the more you know who you are and the more stuff that you've gotten on the other side of, and what's funnier than time, tragedy plus time. So, yeah. like, when you're in the tragedy, it's not very fucking funny. You know what I mean? So, working on that gets you on the other side of it, and that's when you can see what was funny about it, you know? So, yeah. there's there's that, too. And when you slow down, it's not just like, oh, I could take care of my career. You could take care of yourself. Yeah. Like. Dude, I've yeah. been running for years. I just yeah. went to the dentist for the first time in 10 years today. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. That, that, that doesn't yeah, tell yeah, you. Yeah. yeah. They're surprised I had teeth. One yeah. time I went to the dentist, they go, how long have you been smoking? I go, never. They go, interesting. <laughs> and I was like, dude, that's interesting. the most interesting. Dude. You don't want to hear that. <laughs> no. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was fucking... So, yeah, you had, like, butthole problems pretty early, right? Yeah, yeah. He's yeah, like, how the, long have you been getting fucked in the ass? I'm like, yeah, I'm not gay. He's never, like, interesting. Interesting. <laughs> just with that ass Interesting, asshole. dude. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think I just read a joke there with my butthole. Um, yeah, write that down, dude. Write that down. I mean, I feel like we definitely made some... Uh, I think we figured it all out. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, I think we figured everything out, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's funny yeah. when you do one of these, cause you kind of tell your, obviously we didn't do the whole story at all, but it's like, I mean, there is a start and love dude. Yeah. 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 There's a little bit of that as well. Yeah. yeah. 
And then you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, I know. I figured it all out. Yeah, now I'll just go back out into the world and try yeah. to look for another sign, dude. Yeah, dude, I'm looking for a neon sign. Have you read The Tools by Phil Stutz? Uh, oh, I watched that documentary. Documentary yeah. with Jonah Hill. Yeah, those are good. Those are good tools. I love the... A lot um, of what you're saying is like a lot of that book. Mm -hmm. he, call, he would call that sign like that day the source, you yeah. know? Yeah, I don't know. It's uh, it was interesting because I just you, finished a book. So have like, you put it into practice at all? Have you tried to like? I have. I and then another book that I've been that I just finished called Failing Forward. Okay. And it's just, dude, it's all about. And then I listened to my first book with "fuck" in the title, "Unfuck Yourself." Okay. I've been really like focusing on like because, dude, I've it's been bad. Like I've I've I don't know. I I am so obsessed with external uh factors making me happy like same whether it's someone yeah. liking my video giving me a compliment coming to a show like yes yeah. and that the i've completely of a lover, yeah. you know what i mean yeah yeah absolutely validation yeah. of another bigger comedian or whatever oh, yeah. yeah so i've been trying to really figure out why i'm doing that and how can i correct it mm -hmm. and how can i not um, feel like I have to latch on to something, you know, I don't know. It's just, it's hard because you still have to make a living too. I so compliment you, man, and say that you've changed. I've changed. You, you work, you, I can tell you're a guy who works on himself, man. Yeah. I'm trying. It's dude. been cool to see. I mean, I love old Andrew too. I mean, and he's still in there, you know, he's like goofball fucking, you know, I know I miss him. <laughs> I, mean, no, I sometimes think he's funnier than this guy. No, no, dude, this is just funny, man. Yeah. Yeah. That guy, he's, he's funny, but you don't want to like invite him <laughs> to a dinner. You know what I mean? I would invite this guy to a dinner. <laughs> you know I mean? We had one good dinner with we the sushi. <laughs> the sushi. <laughs> That was one of the funniest videos I've ever made. Yeah, dude. I can write a script that's what I think is the funniest thing yeah. ever. It won't be as funny as putting sunglasses <laughs> on a sushi conveyor belt, oh. waiting for them to get to us, putting them on and saying, let's go. <laughs> let's get out of here. Dude, anything could be on I'm going to repost that today. I'll repost oh, that. That oh, was great, God. dude. Um Right, so I want to. You should put that at the end of this episode. You should put that. Oh, that can vary. Yeah, yeah. Well, I wanted to end with um, with uh, I did this thing where <laughs> I fucking I did it as a random thing a couple weeks ago where I asked Chat GPT. Oh, okay. What questions it would ask you to see how much me. better the computer is than me? <laughs> <laughs> so after I eat uh, a dick, uh, I'm like, well, at least I can end it with some. <laughs> A lot of people won't answer them because they come out of my mouth and they sound you asked too. You Chat GTP, GPT, wait, GPT, yeah, what to ask Evan Williams? Yeah, and they had things. Yeah, that's so funny. Yeah. Man. So, okay. so here's the question: So your your mom died. You killed her. Uh, no, no, no. no. <laughs> I was like, whoa, dude. <laughs> we gotta get Skynet out of here, man. <laughs> Bro. Yeah. These videos. Are, anyways, so yeah. how do you develop new material for your stand-up routine? Can you take us through your creative <laughs> process? And how do you know when a joke is ready for the stage? Can you imagine if that came out of my mouth? This is so of? formal yeah. and like robotic. Very man. Lex. Yeah. Uh, whatever that guy. It's also not an interesting question from stand-up to stand-up. You know. Yeah. It's just like something funny happens and I write it down. Or I'm in a group. But you don't setting. write every day to just I write. Do not, no. Yeah. Absolutely not. I tend to write just about every day when it comes to like sketches and script and stuff. I've never written a stand up joke. Are you afraid when you uh do new material on stage or does it are you excited about excited. it? Excited. So excited. Yeah. I think when with that stuff it depends on what show you're on. Like if you're doing depends the cellar the and you have show. to crush or I something. Can't, yeah. I, I it's was, very I, I didn't get to that point where I was doing new stuff at the cellar. But I, I wasn't there long enough after having been passed there to have gotten there probably. But yeah, I it excites me because because I've spent time you know, part of me growing old you know, growing out of my love for stand up there for a bit was that I was just doing the same stuff over and over and same it's not a good feeling that's what i did it's 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 a prison yeah it's like all right what's the the worst case is that i do tried and true material and it bombs and then i'm like that's a whole existential crisis that's going to happen the best case scenario is that i do tried and true material and it crushes and i'm like 
okay, confirmed. This thing I already knew is good is good. <laughs> um, and then the the middle thing that happened, I think, is the worst, which is that you do tried and true material, and it, it does okay, you know? Then you just walk away, and you're like, man, I'm like a has-been. Like, I, like yeah. I'm just doing... Or what about I when knew. you do new, it doesn't work, so then you go to old A, and then that doesn't work. Ooh, then that is a double that's tough, But at least in that set, you tried something, and I think yes. that's better than all that's the other options. That's a good options. point. Yeah. At least you tried something, and you felt something new. You know what I mean? You I have like a got whole better new if you tried something new and it didn't work. 20 that I wrote that I haven't been able to do out here. I haven't been getting as much stage time as I like, mm-hmm. and I'm whatever. So it's like... I yeah. need to tell someone, at least in New York, I used to run bit. That was another, th- like, running bits, because you're so, it was all out of fear. Yeah. You're just afraid. Because yeah. New York's a fucking animal that will eat you up, so you want to, yeah. she's a mean bitch, yeah. In, in addition to stand-up, you've also appeared in a number of TV shows and films. <laughs> okay. How does acting compare to performing stand-up? And how do you approach these different forms of comedy differently? That's what Terminator wants to know. <laughs> that's, what, that's what the, um... The chick from Ex Machina is asking me. All right. Um, <laughs> I. <laughs> also, you can tell me to go fuck myself. If yeah, you don't you go fuck yourself. Yeah, yeah, that's that fine. It's all, yeah, it's all stimulating in different ways. And I, I love acting. I guess with acting, a lot of people say is you have to be a quiet, a quieter. Like, you, you don't need to. Well, it depends on what. Well, stand ups of... in general are really bad at acting if they're not trained, if they don't go get training. Because. Stand-ups, I think, more than any other art form coming into it, need classes, dude. Because yeah. we live in our heads. We live in there. We write the next funny thing. We're not listening to you. We're waiting. You know, us at our worst, we're not listening. Yeah. We're not listeners. We just wait for you to stop talking so we can say the funny thing that we thought of a second ago. And that's so annoying. Uh, it makes diner hangs miserable. <laughs> yeah. We're just screaming over each other. <laughs> And so then you get into acting and like the entire thing is listening. That's all it is. It's like putting all of your attention on your scene partner and listening and waiting to see how they say what they say so you can know how to react and letting natural moments happen and not writing the next moment. I didn't need that credit card joke that I did. When you told that really true therapy story, <laughs> I was mad at myself because that would have been That's old so Andrew, funny, and I'm man. only gonna think about how I <laughs> fucked up there because I should have let that. That was a no, beautiful I moment that you bad. shared, and the, and the callback. Yeah. I don't know. I uh, remember that joke happening, but I don't remember when okay. it happened. Yeah, the callback wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't worth it because it was a beautiful That's so moment, funny, man. Yeah, the um, stand-ups. And then the last story, which you've known, you're known for your unique and thought provoking style of comedy. How do you balance pushing boundaries and challenging your audience while ensuring that your material is still accessible? We could just end on the question. Yeah, let's <laughs> end on that. How do you know it's still accessible, man? Fuck Chat GPT. Uh, this is what I'm learning. GPT, I uh, we're them good to be for more a little while. You know? I expected like a, a wild one to happen. This is what nerds will tell like, you. How do you make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich? You know, like tell me what love feels like. I wanted it to be like the the robot like asking me what love feels like. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I guess I could do it where next time if you come on, I'll be like, do it in the form of Shakespeare. Yeah. Or like in the style of yes. Shakespeare. That's what they tell you. They go, you got to keep pushing the computer. You got to keep. Let, like you could keep going yeah. and then eventually they'll like get to where you want to <laughs> yeah but it's like figure it out bitch like, yeah and i would like i would set up chat gpt to say like to ask me questions if it was uh, a bodybuilder you know or something yeah yeah ask, yeah how to like <laughs> ask evan williams questions about comedy from the perspective of like a sad bodybuilder <laughs> dude let's just do it real quick and that's what happens we'll, we'll, we'll end on that <laughs> okay. i literally just hit yeah. a photo because uh-huh. i took a photo of that to do it and then nothing came up and it took me a second to realize i was hitting a photo so i think chad gpt is gonna be fine uh okay, okay question for evan williams uh, let me do podcast question mm-hmm. for Evan Williams. It knows what Evan Williams you're talking about. This style. There's the liquor. Yeah. There's a Canadian actor. Maybe I'll do comedian Evan Williams. They were asking, they were asking questions about In the style so. of a sad. Oh, no, it knows you. 
That's crazy. It knows your shit, dude. That's wild, uh, man. It's so uh, scary. Dude. Of a sad <laughs> body. So right body. Now. Yeah, dude. <laughs> uh, oh, Evan, my muscles may be bulging, but my heart is breaking. I'm just wondering, as a fellow funny man, how do you find the strength to keep lifting <laughs> spirits when your own are feeling heavy? Do you have any tips for powering through tough times and still bringing joy to your audience? Is this real? You didn't make that up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, Chat GPT, man. My muscles may be bulging, <laughs> but my heart is breaking. <laughs> I'm just wondering, as a fellow funny man, at least the the bodybuilder thinks it's funny. A funny man. I know. I thought he was gonna say a fellow bodybuilder. Yeah. yeah. How do you find the strength to keep lifting, lifting spirits when your own are feeling heavy? <laughs> Do you have uh, any tips for powering through tough times and still bringing joy to your audience? This is, this is my favorite question I've ever been asked. I'll send so that's it what to you, you got to do. You just have to make it really weird and specific. I will say that um, that's probably when I have the easiest time lifting other people is when I'm down uh, because I know that if I get out of my own head and I reach out to a friend and I have some laughs or I get on stage and I just try something new because I'm in a fucking tough spot or like if I open my set with like, I'm going through a breakup right now. What's going on, everybody? Like they know what I'm going through. And so I'm forced to be in like a real moment for the rest of my set. Yeah. It's like, I mean, it's the best. Makes yeah. you human. You know? And not a fucking not chat a fucking GPT who apparently GPT is. Who actually has some thought provoking My buddy had, it, had his uh, for his dad's like 70th, had him chat GPT write a poem. <laughs> and it was his dad's favorite, and they didn't tell him for a while. Like, <laughs> I like it was wow, Jack you G nailed G everything, dude. Oh, he claimed it was his own. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Nice. Thanks for doing this. Of course, man. Check out Evan Williams. Um, what's your what is your Instagram and TikTok? It's it's Evan Williams. I T S Evan Williams. And depending on when this comes out, there's some stuff in May. You can see me record a special in North Carolina on May 25th at the Sunset Theater. Uh, get the tickets before they sell out. I'll be doing San Diego May 11th. Um, and I'll be opening for Mateo in San Antonio May 19th. And you can get all these tickets at my website, evanwilliamscomedy.com. Go see him. He's a great comedian. And soon you won't be able to get into the door because it'll be sold out. And he'll be a fucking, he'll spit on you. This is Chat GPT. Again. Yeah, I'm just reading. <laughs> yeah, reading so, what a meathead said. <laughs> Thank you, bro. I appreciate it. Man. Thanks for doing it. All yeah. right. Have a good day.